This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Okay, when it comes to the market capitalization of a company, how much a company is worth, there are many ways to look at it. It concerns the stage of development of the company. A rapidly expanding company should be valued at a higher price than a mature company making the same amount of money. This is because the future potential of an expanding company is much better. Companies in different industries should also be valued differently. A textile company, for example, should be valued less than a semiconductor company with the same revenue because the technology involved in building both businesses are vastly different, and therefore the potential of the companies are different too. These are among the fundamental rationales behind valuing a company. The calculations and precise numbers come differently. For SpaceX, it is first and foremost a private company. Therefore, only private investors with strategic values to SpaceX gets pitched by Elon Musk and decide whether or not they want to invest. Google and Fidelity, for example, are banking on SpaceX capability to disrupt the telco industry, and SpaceX also saw the strategic value of Google to help SpaceX satellites to reach out to more customers. That's the rationale behind their $1 billion investment in 2015, taking 10% of the company and valuing SpaceX at $12 billion. Fast forward to today, SpaceX has just raised $500 million, issuing 2.7 million shares at $204 per share. This values SpaceX at $33.3 billion. SpaceX investment this time is oversubscribed, which means SpaceX has investors lined up who wants to give money to SpaceX. Just in the past four years, SpaceX market cap has already increased threefold. But the key question of this video today is not what SpaceX is worth now, but what SpaceX could worth in the future, provided all of its plans succeed. That's a big assumption, but we are seeing SpaceX making strides in some key areas, especially with the first Starlink launch a while ago. Although I want to evaluate the financial benefit of setting up a Martian base, I currently could not see a profitable industry supporting it. Therefore, for practical reasons, we will focus on the potential of Starlink in this video. There are three ways for SpaceX to play a role in the global satellite networks, as a launch provider, a white label infrastructure provider, or a holistic service provider, each more ambitious than the previous. The first is what SpaceX is doing right now. What SpaceX is to satellites is what Uber us. SpaceX is responsible for getting customers payloads to a specific orbit, and that's it, nothing more. SpaceX provides the ride, its clients provide the rest. The valuation of SpaceX now is largely based on this scenario, and its launch businesses reportedly made $2.5 billion a year, and among that, 270 million are profits. That's a 10.8% profit margin, and it's incredibly close to Boeing's 13% profit margin and Lockheed Martin's 13.5% profit margin two of the biggest competitors of SpaceX. And that means SpaceX can turn to a positive cash flow whenever it wants. That's why raising funding at this stage speaks volumes about SpaceX commitments in building Starlink and Starship, because SpaceX does not need the money. There are three companies that can give us some ideas into what SpaceX full potential is, Boeing, Huawei, and AT&T. They represent what SpaceX is worth now and what SpaceX could worth in the future. First of all, there is a significant overlap between SpaceX's current businesses and Boeing's defense and security business. If you are interested in the details, check out my recent videos on Boeing businesses in the link down below. But if you don't have time for that, here's the gist. Boeing makes $100 billion a year, and among that, $20 to $35 billion are from its defense businesses. That includes missiles aircrafts as well as rocket and spacecrafts. Boeing's market capitalization is now $197 billion. Therefore, SpaceX with its rocket businesses at best worth around $40 billion, and that's why I think the $33.3 billion is quite a fair number for SpaceX right now. However, Starlink satellites are quite a game changer for SpaceX. Again, if you want the details, I'll link a few of my videos down below. A Starlink's network of internet infrastructure in the sky is similar to the one we have on the ground. Similar capability, similar bandwidth. And here's why SpaceX can do it and other companies can't. No one can send satellites to the sky as cheaply as SpaceX. This means, assuming this business works, 
SpaceX can either be a white label equipment provider for existing telcos or become a telco itself. In the former example, SpaceX is somewhat like a Huawei, and in the latter example, an AT&T. In both cases, SpaceX will have to manufacture satellites that receive and send signals to the ground towers. If we assume that SpaceX will simply provide equipment to telco around the world, Huawei's enterprise business is estimated to worth roughly $60 billion and it is reasonable to project similar results for SpaceX. This is in addition to SpaceX's $40 billion rocket business. But in the possible scenario that SpaceX will take on responsibility to operate the satellites and even go door to door for the sales of their internet, SpaceX will have the possibility of surpassing AT&T's valuation, which is around $200 billion. This number is still optimistic though. AT&T did not get its $200 billion valuation with just its internet services. It also provides TV services with DirecTV, media production services with Turner, HBO, and Warner Brothers. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume a possible valuation of over $100 billion on top of SpaceX's existing $40 billion rocket business. Of course, SpaceX might choose to be a service provider domestically in the United States and a white label equipment provider outside, and in that case, SpaceX will worth all three scenarios combined. Again, going back to the competency of SpaceX, no one can do what SpaceX does with Starlink right now, because no one possesses the reusable launch technology that ensures low cost of operation for SpaceX. This is the fundamental advantage making SpaceX a monopoly until Blue Origin or perhaps a Chinese rocket company catches up. However, it is not to say that there is no obstacles preventing SpaceX from succeeding in its satellite ambitions. The first one would be technical difficulties. The idea of building a satellite constellation in the low Earth orbit is so new that we have not done this before. For example, one unexpected consequence of Starlink is that its satellites are currently visible in the sky. Although it's quite a spectacular view, it's not a responsible outcome we wanted. Some other technical difficulties might emerge in the future and SpaceX needs to be ready for it. Starlink is only possible with countless engineers working behind the scene. If you want to be an engineer yourself, Brilliant.org is a fantastic tool to get you started. Every day, Brilliant publishes daily challenges that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, science, engineering, and computer science. As an example, in the past month, Tens of thousands of people have calculated the chance for rain by watching the clouds. There's a full interactive course related to each daily challenge. You can go in depth to solve fun logic puzzles and challenges, experiment with pendulum clocks to master the physics emotion, or learn the key ideas of computer science with no coding experience required. If you want to learn on the go, whether you're on a flight or traveling with spotty internet connection, you can now take courses offline with Brilliant's iOS and Android applications to spend uninterrupted time learning. So to support Curious Elephant and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head over to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant to get 20% off the annual premium subscription.